Jack and the Beanstalk, an English fairy tale adapted by Joseph Jacobs in 1890. Part 6. The Giant Breaks His Neck Jack's mother shrank back, and it was well she did so, for just as the giant took hold of the last branch of the beanstalk, Jack cut the stem quite through and darted from the spot. Down came the giant with a terrible crash, and as he fell on his head, he broke his neck and lay dead at the feet of the woman he had so much injured. Before Jack and his mother had recovered from their alarm and agitation, a beautiful lady stood before them. Jack, said she, you have acted like a brave knight's son and deserve to have your inheritance restored to you. Dig a grave and bury the giant, and then go and kill the giantess. But, said Jack, I could not kill anyone unless I were fighting with him, and I could not draw my sword upon a woman. Moreover, the giantess was very kind to me. The fairy smiled on Jack. I am very much pleased with your generous feeling, she said. Nevertheless, return to the castle and act as you will find needful. Jack asked the fairy if she would show him the way to the castle as the beanstalk was now down. She told him that she would drive him there in her chariot, which was drawn by two peacocks. Jack thanked her and sat down in the chariot with her. The fairy drove him a long distance round, till they reached a village which lay at the bottom of the hill. Here they found a number of miserable-looking men assembled. The fairy stopped her carriage and addressed them. "'My friends,' said she, "'the cruel giant who oppressed you and ate up all your flocks and herds is dead, and this young gentleman was the means of your being delivered from him and is the son of your kind old master the knight.' The men gave a loud cheer at these words and pressed forward to say that they would serve Jack as faithfully as they had served his father. The fairy bade them follow her to the castle, and they marched thither in a body, and Jack blew the horn and demanded admittance. The old giantess saw them coming from the turret loophole. She was very much frightened, for she guessed that something had happened to her husband and as she came downstairs very fast, she caught her foot in her dress and fell from the top to the bottom and broke her neck. When the people outside found that the door was not opened to them, they took crowbars and forced the portal. Nobody was to be seen, but on leaving the hall they found the body of the giantess at the foot of the stairs. Thus Jack took possession of the castle. The fairy went and brought his mother to him, with the hen and the harp, he had the giantess buried and endeavored as much as lay in his power to do right to those whom the giant had robbed. Before her departure for fairyland, the fairy explained to Jack that she had sent the butcher to meet him with the beans in order to try what sort of lad he was. If you had looked at that gigantic beanstalk and only stupidly wondered about it, she said, I should have left you where your misfortune had placed you only restoring her cow to your mother. But you showed an inquiring mind and great courage and enterprise. Therefore you deserve to rise, and when you mounted the beanstalk, you climbed the ladder of fortune. She then took leave of Jack and his mother. The End